Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Blue Beetle. I should say I'm familiar with Blue Beetle in several incarnations in the comic books, and I understand this one. Um, even though I stopped collecting comics at around uh, 2008, 2012, let's say, I had an understanding of him, and I was sort of enjoying it in the comics. There's a there's a transition between the Blue Beetle we kind of know uh, during the, you know, when Superman dies, uh, Cord, and some intrigue and what kind of hero he was, and to Jaime Reyes, who gets a different version of the Blue Beetle. So I, I enjoy the character, but it's not something I totally look forward to. But comic book movies, being a nerd, I'm like, I gotta watch a superhero movie. It's gonna be Blue Beetle because it's what's up next in my, you know, list of things that I'm sort of interested in. But I'm gonna say Blue Beetle is a, uh, it's disappointing, but it's a missed opportunity. They go way too heavy with the Mexican type thing, and I can see it being something you might you know, enjoy, like, if I'm watching some old gangster movies or comedies even, um, you know, they overdo the Italian thing, and okay, whatever. It was known, you know, I'm Italian and Irish, let's say, and Spanish and German, whatever. But, okay, so it goes way overboard. But I can kind of understand it, but, again, it just gets grating on my nerves. Like, I get it, I get it, I get it. In the first 11 minutes of this movie... You know, I want to strangle somebody, and I'm trying to let it go because, hey, this is, uh, you know, maybe a demographic that's not highlighted. But I think there's a point where you just overdo it. And that's my sort of major gripe with it. Although, all right, so what makes this movie worse and lowers it to a factor of annoyance for me is no matter what's going on on the screen, no matter what good special effects or bad, the whole movie is lowered quality-wise because it feels like the whole movie is ADR, uh, additional voice, whatever they do after the movie's done. So I've worked with a filmmaker friend, and sometimes the audio's not good on a certain scene he filmed. I don't have the actors come in and um, just talk into a microphone to get the lines clear. Blah, 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 there's wind, there's an airplane, right? So I think it's called ADR, whatever. This whole movie sounds like it's overdubbed by the actors, and it's on top of everything, and it's fucking so annoying. Because I'm coming to this understanding of, like, there's fun to be had in movies, and I get it, and you want to be the critic who's being an objective, subjective stuff, uh, whatever. I enjoy Green Lantern, blah, 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 I said it a hundred times. You know, I want to enjoy these movies. Even if I look at it and go, wow, like, sucker punch, or I'll pull out a fucking, you know, uh... Anyway, it's a movie that's just kind of stupid and dumb, but you have fun with it. Blue Beetle should have been a Netflix-type thing that spawned a TV show. Go for it. Ramp it up, become the Batman 80, 56, uh, 60s Batman with Adam West. And turn this into that. It's where you should have gone, in my opinion. It's what you should have really leaned into heavy. Because the movie is fucking ridiculous. It sometimes looks great. It looks shitty. Again, if you have a good moment and there's an actor or a scene's really, you know, hitting you. For me, it's just... Uh... Just lowered in quality because I can't stand this fucking... Whoever put the voice in here, whoever overdid the sound, it's just fucking so annoying to me. And I've noticed this a couple of times in movies, but like I said, it's just a little minor thing once in a while. One of the famous things they do is, you'll see a character who if they want to add lines into a movie, they'll get a scene where his back is to you so you don't see the face. And this kind of is a little nitpick with movies that have dialogue that's pretty intense and long. 
but they keep shooting back and forth. You can clearly see the person whose back is turned to you is not talking because they have like an angle on the jaw. Whatever. It's just techniques that people use. You got to get other people in. You got to put a new line in. You got to get more people to um, fix their lines and clear up audio. But for the whole movie, and this is just a major thing at the beginning of this because I, I, I didn't care about the plot. In, in a sense, and what's going on, and how to piece this thing together, because you're oversaturating this heritage culture thing. It's almost nauseating, but I can almost understand that. You overdubbed this movie, or you did something with the audio that just made this movie seem amateur. It's like, all right, so it's directed by Angel Manuel Soto, written by Garrett Dunnett Alcor. DC characters, right? Produced. I don't really know those names. We got starring Zolo Meriduela, Adriana Bazara, Baraza, uh, Damian Alcazar. I mean, you know Susan Sarandon's in it, and it's one of those. I'm gonna give weight to this role. It happens in a lot of movies, and she does in a sense. Uh, again, y you want to say this is just fun to be had in this movie, and I'm gonna. Watch a superhero romp as corny, as campy as it wants to be, and as tonally fucking insane as it tries to be. Like, you first fuck up the setting with the powers and what it can do, because you can't start this off where you get to see when he first becomes a Blue Beetle. So, let me quickly just say about the comics and what the difference is. So, the old Blue Beetle was a guy, according to this movie, who was knew about the scarab? We'll get into that, uh, you know, bug type uh, medallion type artifact. But he can never crack it, and he became like a Batman superhero. And they talk about it here, and it's kind of cute because you know, you know, the comics. Fine. Now this alien supernatural, however you want to say it, uh, scarab gives you the. You know, the extreme Iron Man armor type effect, where it's just a medallion, but this one's a little more disgusting, and they make fun of it, that it goes into your body, through your ass, which was hilarious, and it, it, I guess it nests in your spine, turns you into this blue beetle, which is, again, it's like Iron Man's armor coming on him, uh, you know, in pieces, and, again, you got this struggle, so you got this kid, uh, you know, his family... They're going to lose the house, so it's okay, trope, whatever. And you got to get a job. They cut to the job not really working. He kind of gets mixed up with a job interview with this woman, beautiful woman. I tend to call some people, what did I do? It was like a Vin Diesel movie. I was like, hot. I don't want to say the name because the actress, because I don't know it and go look for it. Just call him Hotness, right? So Hotness is the daughter of some company that takes over the court business, Susan Sarandon, blah, blah, blah. It gets caught up in this, but before you get there, you are just drowned in nonsense, jokes, corny things. I've been around Spanish families, Mexican, Italian, German. No one does this stuff. I don't know why like, every day isn't a celebration in somebody's kitchen, and you know, it's not joke. And again, you got tonal shifts, so. You want to do really serious uh, risks and uh, deaths, let's say. People die in the movie. And you want to balance that with some campy, you know, culture stuff. And on top of that, superhero tropes. It's got to be done better. So the new Beatles more of like a magical alien scarab thing. It goes on you. It settles in your brain like a bug. Turns you into the blue beetle. And you've got... Um, just a combination of like Green Lantern and Iron Man in a sense. And there's that whole struggle, right? So he's got a young kid, you know, he's doing a lot of wise talking and stuff. He's like a Spider-Man, his character. And there's some, again, I want to say some fun to be had in some cool scenes. But you fuck up the power rating, as I was saying, with he gets the suit, he's experimenting with it, what can he do? And he splits a bus in half. Like he goes to protect himself. His blue beetle wings create an energy cocoon type thing. 
and the bus just gets cut right in half. And they want to do this cool scene with how they're shooting it, the people in the bus. Well, first of all, if it's cutting through the bus and melting, it, you know, whatever, people are fucked up. You can't have it happen and there's no one hurt. And they even have him going around, oh my god, there's kids on the bus. Kid, are you okay? It doesn't work. Like, especially when you're doing things later on what the potential of the suit is and how powerful it can be. So, there's always that danger with superhero stuff. I think Iron Man did it well when he's in the big suit and it barely gets him out and he's at home and he's making his suit with the colors. Okay. But, it is a hero's journey. It's not a terribly, you know, movie in that sense. But again, even if you're finding the highs and lows in this and finding that middle ground, maybe you do like all the culture stuff and the overboard, in my opinion, um, saturation of it. I'm always reminded with the audio that comes out of nowhere. It sounds like it's on top of things. It's not embedded right. It doesn't feel like I'm in the scene. It's really jarring for me. And again, you're not, we're not even really in the plot of this movie. He meets Hotness and she gives him a fucking thing because she's trying to find out what's going on with her company, her father. And it's been taken away from her in that sense. The mother's trying to create Omax, which is a real Easter egg callback to the comics where a one man army corps. She wants to create a new military type thing. And she's got this device she's created and making. And it's based off the scarab. But they can never get it to use properly because it chooses the host. But she's gotten far enough that she's got prototypes ready to go. It just might not be as powerful or as versatile as the Blue Beetle Scarab. So the Blue Beetle Scarab, when it chooses you, Jaime Ray is. Um, it, it, after the initial oh my god process which is basically the whole movie which I, i'll give them you know you don't know what the fuck's going on you're scared shit this thing is you know on your back and so hotness hands him the thing and it turns into him going on him as he brings it home to his family and he's showing them and every quirk the grandmother with guns at the end this fucking movie gets so stupid but again if it's your idea of fun should have been a Netflix hour and 45 minute movie, or hour and a half movie. It should have spawned just a series. Now, you would never be able to maintain it unless you dedicate money into the suit. Because I can't see a TV show where he's this wise ass, joke cracking um, young man who sometimes becomes a Blue Beetle. You'd have to be aiming towards a, you know, a spectacular special effects type show. It's not like Green Arrow where you could try to fucking make it where you know, he's got a bow. There's not a lot of stuff to do. This thing morphs and does energy blasts that fly, so I get it. But that's the only way I see this working is lean into this cultural shit and make it a joke fest. I don't want to, you know, have any scenes where I'm supposed to take anything seriously when someone dies or um, the, the stupid jokes when they're running... If you ran someone over, all the constant fucking interjection of the family and going overboard and putting them into the plot, and then this plot goes fucking crazy. Um, so he involves his family, he fucks up his house, he's learning how to use the powers, hotness doesn't know what's going on, he meets up with her, she's getting shot at, the, you know, because she's, she's the one who stole it from Susan Sarandon. And then the family is interjected, but I get what you're kind of going for, and sure, I don't know, let's do a comparison. If this was Kamala Khan show, the entourage of the family, the overboardness that they go to, the balance they're trying to do with, I'm not saying it's a great show, but and the balance that they're trying to maintain with cultural significance and highlighting, uh, you know, a, you know, so, a culture that's not as invisible and not, doesn't get enough, you know, show on TV representation, they do it well. This movie is, is fucking nonstop, and it's got to go right to the end. Now, the Marvels movie kind of interjected the family into it, and again, I'm not saying it's great. Is it fun to be had? Sure. 
But there's a balance to it. You know, sometimes you see the family, they're trying to get those cats together it's in the Marvel's movie. Here, it's non-stop the sister, the fucking grandmother, the mother, the father, and it's over and over, and they're giving fucking speeches, and then they're supposed to be dying, and they're giving, and then it leads to just craziness, because Susan Sarandon wants the scarab back, now that she knows that it's been unlocked and it chose somebody, she kind of hangs back and tests the thing out, because now it's active. So, I guess from Susan Sarandon's point of view, this is how I see the movie. I can't break the scarab. I haven't figured out how to unlock its secrets. It, it hasn't chosen anybody. But I built prototypes that I can, according to this movie, sell to the military. They're just going to be um, no cross between um, piecemeal, iron mail type adaptions. I would say more what crossbones look like. In the uh, Age of Ultron, when he's got these bulky pieces on him. And they kind of have weapons and can morph into certain things, but limited. So that's what her plan is. Then, when she sees that the Scarab is unlocked by Jaime Reyes, I think her plan changes. So now it's, let's capture him, let's give the power of the Scarab to my suits, and... It should have went a little, leaned a little more to the sci-fi. Like, you no, know, you have to take the code from... Maybe they did. Again, a lot of things annoy me in this movie. I'm trying to get through it. Maybe they did hint at it, but it needs a special code. Anyway, they involve uh, Jaime fighting the main villain, villain, because Susan Sarandon's the main villain, but, of course, she has a henchman who has a decent story, and they actually... I'll give them credit. They tried to capitalize on it, so you kind of care about the villain. Um, the I guess the dupe sort of character. This mean, tough-looking fucking guy who works for Susan Sarandon, who was taken off the battlefield near death. And you find out like his history right at the end. It's a little forced. But okay, you know what? He's more interesting than Marvel's done with fucking most of their villains. So I'm going to give them credit there. I kind of was... Um, resonating with the villain and what what was happening towards the end. It was a little too, you know, forced. But again, Marvel should take a fucking uh, class in this type of stuff. However, it they steal the power from Blue Beetle, and you know, I don't know. I'm supposed to resonate with Blue Beetles. Sort of defeat, death, confidence in himself type thing. And I, maybe I would have been more wrapped into that except for the family running through the fucking the hideout, shooting people, just going nuts, taking tech. Well, they took tech from Kord because Hotness' his father was Tech Kord, the original Blue Beetle, blah, blah, blah. And by the way, he's missing. What a fucking mistake of not bringing him back at the end and having him be like, Again, I would have made this a Netflix movie, and the TV show starts when Ted Code comes back, but he's only going to be a mentor in the base type computer person, you know, the one that helps them go on missions and stuff. Or maybe even trains them. Well, who knows? So, I'm trying to get into this um, comeback, willpower, determination of Reyes. Like, what kind of hero can he be? But the suit's drained. He's fucked up. He's been beaten. You know, a lot of things get destroyed and beat up, but not on the scale of, like, the Superman movies. Enough that the tone is off balance, too, with the jokes, and it's just way too much. And this fucking old lady's got this fucking, uh, how do, what do you call these things again from, like, the Predator movie? Um, <laughs> it's like a spinning turbine. These fucking guns are insane, and they have the balls, the nerve for the character... To say to the grandmother, how are you holding that thing? Right, it's like, you know, those mini guns uh, that uh, Jesse Ventura was using. It might have even been bigger than that. I don't know. Now, I get the sister taking the tech from Cord, because they all took some stuff from Cord's tech place. And another pretty cool scene with Hotness is like, oh, it works sometimes. Because <laughs> the follow wasn't that great of a, you know inventor but 
they don't do flashbacks of him as a blue beetle, which might have been cool. So you got the end of the movie, the, the fucking final thing, and Reyes is getting his determination. He's gonna take it out and just fucking go berserk. He's full potential because there's that learning curve where the scarab is sentient and he's got to merge with it. I can do this psychedelic thing where. In order to come back from this defeat type thing, he's got to accept the scarab, and it's like a female voice, and throughout the movie, it's doing things for him, and they're trying to have an understanding where, you know, there is an element to the story there that's pretty cool. But they do this psychedelic thing, he gets his willpower strength back, the suit comes back, and there's his brawl at the end, and I'm going to give them credit. Instead of a... It is a knockdown brawl, you know, him and uh, the villain set up dupe, uh, tough military guy in a fully formed all Max suit now. It didn't look so too good. Again, there were times Blue Beetle looks amazing in what they're doing, and sometimes it just looks like shit, like he's wearing a toy or it's plastic. So, again, this is why, in my opinion, it would have been an amazing Netflix launch. Obviously, I would have edited out all the cultural stuff. And spread it throughout the season. And just had, you know, let it be comfortable. Let me feel comfortable in this family that does things I've never seen before. With all their bullshit quirks and, you know, uh, callings to their heritage and all that stuff. Which is okay. Like, I get I get it. You know, not enough representation out there. But it's too much. It's right at the end of this movie. And it keeps going right to the end scenes. It, and it's just too much. Like I said, the sister I can understand. Oh, I fucking really hate it in the beginning of this movie. Uh, you know, but okay, dynamics of family, I had a brother, you know, some of the stories I would tell might seem weird to people, and the way we act and talk to each other, I would say it's more like a best friend brother, but, and that's really the plot from the movie, it's just end battle, and again, what I think they did better than Marvel does with most villains is, there's a crisis at the end where... Jaime Reyes gets through to the guy in a way where his memory's unlocked or something, and he finds out what a patsy he's been, and Susan Sarandon doesn't give a shit about him, and then they, they reveal the little tidbits of his past that kind of make you feel for him. And, and I'm going to give credit to the movie. It's the only compelling part of the movie that drew me in at all. And that's a, that's a shame. Uh, it could have been really a unique cultural experience that spawned the TV series, and that's where it went, and it leans into it. You know, but little at a time, let me get used to this family doing, doing the same, the stupidest fucking things ever. And so you got this ending where the villain kind of turns on Susan Sarandon in, a, in my opinion, a pretty cool way. It is it is kind of anticlimactic, but again, it's a, ch a choice they made with the villain, and that they'll get paid off. And I'll give this part, you know, just um, done pretty well, in my opinion. It doesn't elevate the movie, though, to where it should be. Now, I don't, and even the actor was great in it, the villain. He doesn't say much. He's got that grunt, that thing going with very little to say. But when it's revealed, it, you can feel it. And, it, it, you know, it's off pudding with, you got these jokes going on and grandma's running around with stupid machine guns and just fucking kill them kill them you kill the fucking father it's in some bullshit um opening thing where susan sarandon comes to them you know uh, a combination of heart attack type thing and they they foreshadow it because he had a heart i'm okay and these inspiration things, these talks, these little quibits of speeches, these little um, nuance adding to his experiences, grown into a hero. It's just wasted. It's oversaturated. Fucking, in my opinion, just bullshit. It had to be spaced out more. You get to this end of this movie, and they're still doing it, and you just almost dreading, like, oh my god, is he going to be another one in that sense? As a whole experience, again, if this movie had proper sound... Now, again, someone might come to me and say, you're crazy. Maybe it's just the way things uh, set up on my speakers. I had a problem once with listening to someone's... I was doing a stream type thing, 
and I realized that there's a difference when you're listening with headphones, not headphones, if you have stereo set up and you have the proper speakers in the right positions and do you have the newest Dolby? I get it. So you feel things are dropped out. Things get missing. Things become on the forefront. But I've watched enough of these movies and I, you know, I get the gist of it. I'm just going to leave a little opening for that. Like someone might send me a copy or I get a Blu-ray. And I'm like amazed at what they did. Because they have to, in my opinion, do that. You're going to put out things, and see, I think this thing goes right to streaming services, which I think it should have started at. Um, uh, I don't know, you know. It was a good mindset, like, in, in a sense, you know, ready to watch a superhero movie. Get up for the nonsense, because even some of the shittier Marvel and DC movies, you know, have fun with. That Wonder Woman 1984 is a like garbage movie. You just have fun. Gal Gadot's great at Wonder Woman and, you know, some good scenes. And, like, this is the hallmark of a made-for-TV movie that should be, should have been seeded with the um, teasing of a show and have it set up. Commit to it in that sense and then suddenly leaning heavy. You know, then we can come to understand and believe that the grandmother is this and that, and the father was this and that, and the mother and the sister. It's too much, too soon. You know, I don't need within the first 11 minutes of the movie to be so fucking annoyed at the nonsense bullshit. And my brain keeps telling me this is additional voice acting. Why is it so loud? Why does it sound different? Uh, you, know, you know, I can't give this movie... You know, that thumbs up in that sense. Maybe we can look at it as, oh, what budget did it make? Again, made for TV, spawn a TV show. I could see how expensive that would be because of all the special effects. But that's the only way I see this working. It's the only way I see a Blue Beetle um, maintaining or continuing. Uh, clearly, I can see a TV show start and they bring him in every once in a while. You know how they do that with DC shows. I mean, the bulk of them are, I think even Flash ended, so, like, what's out there? I gotta watch uh, Stargirl, I think, or whatever it's called. I don't know what to say too much more about Blue Beetle. I wanted to really love it. There's some pretty fun scenes. There's a pretty decent, um, you know, villain scenario, but it doesn't pay off till right at the end. And the journey from there to the end is just... Just annoying and saturated with bullshit, in my opinion. Space it out more. Give the representation some, you know, uh, quality stuff. And they try to put it in here, but it doesn't work that much. Not when you have so much garbage going on around everything. I'm okay with the general pacing of the movie. I think the whole movie's on there. It's like an hour and a half. But again, you're doing so much. You got all this family, and they don't they don't, they don't go away. It's not like you meet them in the beginning and you touch base with them every once in a while. They're in every fucking scene. It feels like there's nonsense things just being put there for no reason to fill this movie. So did you even have a real full movie? Was this a two-hour movie cut down and people are regretting what they took out of the movie? I fucking doubt it. It's got that feeling of being rushed and just put together the best of what they can do. Fine. I've rated movies like that where I can kind of see what they tried to do, what they made the best of, and I'll give it credit for that. You know, maybe someone came in and just had to really fix this fucking movie up. It just, again, there's an amateur feeling to this. It's not saying that well, these days TV can be even more compelling. It's more... Um, you know, diverse and special effects and committed to things. So I'm not saying like, but it feels like low quality. It can, even if it was a movie, it feels like a, you know, Sharknado type company, you know, took it over. I had a problem with that with the Exorcist movie I did a review on. Like, it just felt like you ate the name and put out some things. This, I think, has a little more love to it. I think there's a... Uh, a real desire to have the culture 
represented in a big way and, you know, pushed just a little too much. Uh, actually, a lot too much, but I'm just going to give the benefit of the doubt that if it was centered in mind, you know, would I like to see people with all the hand justice and speaking from, like, Brooklyn mooks and, you know, the Italian accent bullshit wannabe mobster type things and, hey, yo... Uh, you know, I think even I would get annoyed at that, even if it was centered into what I'm familiar with or, you know, what's in my um, my existence and my experience growing up with who, you know, raised me and the friends in the neighborhood. I don't know. This, you know, if this movie has another fucking balls to, like, have one of those, the community's going to come together to help them... Their fucking house. I think it's how their house gets destroyed like three times. Well, once he flies through the roof, it's got to be fixed. And then the house is just shit. And then we're going to lose it anyway. Um, and they try to do the, uh, you know, at the end of the movie, the, the community comes together. And it's a moment where, oh, you know, we're going to be okay. And I'm like, who gives a fuck? This? Stop it. See, I get annoyed now. Because that it's fucking stupid. This movie wasn't a community movie where you spread out the cultural significance to neighbors and their neighbors and, you know, Jaime Reyes is starting out small in this fucking community. You know, he can be their hero because I think they even fucking said that. Um, I don't know, missed opportunity here. Uh, again, uh... It's not offensive, I don't think, but I could see people just fucking, they're done with this fucking corpse and family shit in, in like the first 15, 20 minutes of the movie. I think that's a mistake. If you want to do something like this, I think you got to keep maintaining that in a TV show where week to week we can come in and roll our eyes at, you know, the whatever Al Bundy type, you know, because you know what you're going to get with him every week, and it's going to be ridiculous. And you're trying to ride that balance line between a young uh, coming-of-age hero, family problems, villain, sub-villain, henchman, hotness, and it's just a jumbled mess, especially when this fucking... the sound in this movie is just so annoying to me i'm gonna watch it again um and see if that's something that i just caught at the wrong time if these things could happen so taking that out of the movie can i see people having fun when i recommend the movie sure you know what yeah you can go and have a, a, a fun thing and you Interested in the representation of a Mexican, I'm dare to say Hispanic type, uh, you know, culture, um, experience, then sure, everybody's got to have their hero, even if you want to just put that in, you know, a subplot of the neighborhood, like, oh, this place hasn't had a hero, because, you know, Metropolis has Superman, uh, so-and-so, Gotham is Batman, well... <clears throat> New Mac, wherever this was, has Blue Beetle. And I'm okay with that, because that could be interesting. Uh, you can even play with the show, if it was a TV show, where <clears throat> the whole premise of the show is villains are coming into smaller towns because they're fleeing Superman and Batman and the Flash, Green Arrow. You know, villains aren't going to stay in those states. I think they're going to move to, you know, easier prey. Even though, like, you know, Flash and Superman will get there, but for the most part, bank robberies, you know, little things. You could have easily set this up as, you know, after getting his powers, Reyes feels that the community is being um, slowly in invaded, in a sense, by criminal organizations and the odd and end superhero, supervillain. It's where I would go with this. I'd spread out this fucking jokey, campy, heritage bullshit and not fucking douse people with it every fucking five minutes of the movie and I definitely get the audio fix because if you're gonna put this movie out I'd definitely look into that unless I watch it again and go you know I'm fucking stupid 
So Blue Beetle, ah, uh, you know, I can see like certain people I would recommend it to, certain friends, certain this or that. So fine, watch Blue Beetle in that case, but it's not going to be a stellar um, launching point for anything. Some good uh, actors and stuff uh, scattered throughout, some good performances. Uh, keynote for the villains type uh, journey in this was, I think they did it well at the end. And then I kind of resonated with it. Uh, up and down special effects wise, horrible audio. Uh, a heritage type culture thing I think certain people could like, you know. It almost got to me annoyingly in Kamala Khan, but they feel that they spread it out better. Here it's just stupid, ridiculous, annoying sometimes. And that with the other things kind of dragged this movie down a little bit for me. But give it a try. It's a quick movie, hour and a half. It's not going to win any awards, in my opinion. But, <clears throat> you know, breakthrough actor, actors here and there. Um, sure, fine. Get me some... Uh, TV show continuation, I might be up for it in that sense. We'll put him into other things. But again, this guy this is going to be a special effects nightmare money-wise. And I think that's just where the death knell comes with seeing him again in that way. But anyway, if you're thinking about it, enjoy it. the premise superheroes. You know, watch it. If you're just oblivious to things and want to see a fun movie, nah, you know, I don't know if it's put together that well, but... Oh, that's my two cents on this movie. I hope everybody's doing well. My best to you and yours. Take care.